Welcome back to Anderson Smoke Show. Today we are revisiting one of my most popular videos and that's an indoor oven ribs video. That video has received hundreds of thousands of views and thousands of comments and likes and people absolutely love it. Now the problem is that video was with baby back ribs and everyone wants to know how do you do the same thing with spare? Because of the differences in meat, the cook times are gonna be longer with spare ribs. So today, I've got a rack of St. Louis cut spare ribs and we are gonna recreate my famous oven ribs video. Let's dive into it. So whenever I cook ribs, I start off by taking them out of the package and rinsing them under water and pat drying them. What that does, it removes all of the purge, all of the blood and the juices that they were packaged in. I like to do that and have a nice clean slate to start with. Any ribs that we make, we've got a membrane along the back. This is a chewy, rubbery membrane. We want to remove this garbage. Sometimes people will leave them, especially on crock pot ribs or ribs that are gonna be really tender because they're relying on this to keep the structure, to keep them together as a rack of ribs. But we're looking for tender, we're looking for flavor, and not some chewy rubber. So we're gonna take it off. So what I do when it comes to the membrane, I take a butter knife. If you flip it over, you can look and see, you've got the bones. What I do is I take the butter knife and I work my way under one of these bones here and I work my way all the way across, and as I get the knife a little deeper, I pry up just a little bit, and that helps pull the membrane off. Using a sharp knife will pierce this, and it will prevent you from getting this off in a nice, clean pool. I then take a sheet of paper towel, and I grab this, and I grab the membrane, and I pull it all the way across to make sure that from one side of the rack to the other, it's loose, and then I start to peel it down the ribs. And if you've done a good job, you can pull the entire membrane off in one clean pool. Now look at that, that is rubbery. I mean, I can't even tear this. Get that garbage out of here. Now that we've got the membrane off, it's time to season it. What I like to use is an olive oil binder. I use fats, olive oil, avocado oil, duck fat. Today we'll be using olive oil. I do this because it creates a nice finish on these ribs. It's gonna help them char up a little bit, it's gonna help them firm up, but it's still gonna preserve that good bark, that good bite, and all of those flavors. So I'm gonna take some of this olive oil and I'm just gonna drizzle it into my hand, my gloved hand here, and I'm gonna wipe it onto the backside of these ribs. Then I've got my Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub. This is just a good all-purpose barbecue rub. You can use any rub that you like and I'm going to season this really liberally. At this point, I take the back side of my glove because it's dry. I pat along the ribs, and that just makes sure that the rub is sticking to the surface of this rack of ribs. Flip it over. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Olive oil in the glove. We're gonna wipe that on and spread that across the surface of the ribs. Back at it with the barbecue rub by Killer Hogs. You can season this any way you like. I like to use uh, a variety of barbecue rubs. We're gonna take the back side of your hand, pat dry it again to make sure that rub is intact on the surface of the meat, and they are just about ready to go into the oven. Now what I like to do is give them about five minutes to sweat. You'll see that the moisture starts to seep up and really grab onto that rub. You'll see that the surface gets shiny perfectly fine. We're gonna push these out of the way. We're gonna grab our cookie sheet and some foil, and we're gonna get them ready for the oven. I've got myself some Reynolds Wrap Heavy Duty Wide. I use this all the time when I'm grilling and cooking because it's a little tougher and it covers a lot more surface. So I'm gonna take this, one strip, and it covers the entire width and length of the pan. Perfect. Make sure you don't poke any holes in this. We're using this specifically to keep the pan clean. But I'm gonna go ahead and pick these up and carefully place them onto the center of this cookie sheet. We'll let these ribs sweat for another minute. We'll get the oven preheated to 350 degrees, and then it'll be time to get them in. As you can see, those ribs have started to sweat. We can see the shiny surface and that rub soaking in. 
it's time to get them into our oven, which we have preheated to 350 degrees. Let's go ahead and get them in. I have the rack about center height, and that's what we're looking for here. We'll set that down right there and get this closed. Now, when I do baby back ribs, it's two hours at 350, but these are spare ribs. They're gonna take longer. So we're looking about that two hours and 45 minute mark at 350 degrees. We're gonna check in a couple times, show you the progress, and then I'll tell you exactly when it's time to pull them out. All right, let's take a look at these. We are about two hours in. Looking good to me. Check for tenderness here in about another half hour or so. That'll put us at two and a half hours. Everything's looking good. If you hear that noise, that means the ribs are done. We are two hours and 45 minutes in. Let's pull them out and I'm gonna show you that tenderness check. Oh man, do those look good. So you can do this test while it's in the oven carefully, but you have to reach in. I've got myself a toothpick. What you wanna do is just check for tenderness in between the bones. Find the meat in between and you want to poke with a toothpick. You want this to feel tender. You don't want it to bounce back. You don't want it to push back. You wanna be able to insert this toothpick almost effortlessly. And I can tell right now that these ribs are just about done. All right, so we've got our rack of ribs here. I've got a bottle of the Rib Rack Original. I'm just looking for a nice, simple, sweet barbecue sauce. Take my silicone brush here, and I'm just gonna do my best to try not to get a lot of sauce on the foil, because we know that'll make a mess. We wanna make sure that we sauce as much on the sides as we can. Like I said, we're trying to keep this nice and neat because that sauce will burn on the foil. They're sauced, it's ready to go back into the oven for about six minutes or so. The key to cooking is knowing when it's time to pull the trigger. So I can take a look at this and see that we're not going to need the broiler. I can see that the sauce is bubbling, it's caramelizing really well. And the last thing I wanna do is burn these ribs. No need for the broiler. We will actually pull these out here momentarily. You don't wanna ever cook to time. It's always a good starting place. But like I said, I can see that these ribs are gonna be done and that there's no need for the broiler setting. So we're gonna give this just another moment. We're gonna pull them out. We're gonna show you exactly what we did. It's time to get these ribs off. Boy, they look good. As you can see in here, they are really hot. We're gonna get them off this foil and onto our cutting board. We're gonna let them cool for a few minutes. We're gonna show you exactly how good they are. We let these ribs rest for about five minutes or so, and it is time to cut into them and see how they turned out. Now, when it comes to ribs and cutting perfectly in between the bones, it's actually best sometimes to look and see the pattern on the back. Because a lot of times these bones just don't run straight. They run at an angle. And I can see here exactly how they're running. And boy, they are tender. But they seem to have a nice cut to them. We'll go through and cut the rest of these. Sometimes it's easiest to just flip them over and just cut real quick in between each of the bones. Now, a lot of the oven ribs that videos and, and things that I've seen, uh, people overcook them, they wrap them in foil for three hours and you're really braising them at this point and they get mushy and that's not what we're looking to do today. The only way to know how well you did is to give them a try. And as you can see, those ribs cut beautifully. And that's what I was looking for. I didn't want these mushy ribs. That's why we didn't wrap them at all when they were in the oven. So we're about two hours, 45 minutes, plus the six minutes at 450 degrees. It's time to give them a try. And the true test, besides taste, is to see how clean of a bite we get off the bone. If you like great barbecue and it's cold and you don't feel like going outside and cooking, or you're someone who doesn't have access to a smoker, these oven spare ribs are to die for. They're tender, they're juicy, and they're full of flavor. 
and I made them in less than three hours in my kitchen. So check out these oven spare ribs, give them a try for yourself, and I'll see you next time at Anderson Smoke Show. Thank you.